Hi friends! Today we are going to share with you how to do an horizontal augmentation in the posterior mandible. Let's go with it! My name is Jose Luis Montpel and together with my partner in crime, Dr. Lara, today we are going to walk you through step by step in how to do an horizontal bone augmentation in the posterior mandible. Let's go with it. First of all, we need to take a look to the CBCT. This is absolutely mandatory. We have to have an X-ray. We have to have a CBCT, a CT scan, in order to be absolutely sure that we do not have enough bone to place a narrower implant. In this CBCT, we also have to be very careful on the amount of bone we need. And how do we usually do it? Okay, we want to place implants around four millimeters. So we need around eight millimeters in order to leave two millimeters of uh, bone on the lingual, two on the buccal, that is eight. So if we do our measure in the CVCT and we have three millimeters of uh, dative bone, we need to augment five millimeters in order to achieve those eight millimeters. That's normally our rule. And what happened when our patient do not have those six, seven millimeters that allows us to place those 3.5 uh, diameter implants. We need to do something. We need to augment the area in order to place some implants in a predictable way. So we've shared with you tons of video. You have it up here on how to do a bone block, why we use autogenous bone and many others. First of all, as I already said, our CT scan. When we uh, analyze our CT scan. We have to see the recipient side where implants uh, where our implants are going to be uh, placed, and also the donor side. We have to go remember to the external oblique line in order to see where the alveolar nerve is located, in order to see or to choose our tool to harvest the bone. Okay, remember either the microsaw or the uh, piezo electric device. Once we have analyzed the uh, recipient side and the donor side, we need to go place some anesthesia on the patient. We always do all these procedures under local anesthesia, maybe intravenous sedation and infiltrative anesthesia. We do not block the alveolar nerve itself, okay? Only infiltrative anesthesia in the, in the area we're going to, to work on. Now we have to perform the incisions in order to access the recipient side and also the donor side. That's a great advantage of doing this curry technique in the posterior area of the mandible. It is that the donor side is adjacent, is right beside the recipient side. So we only have one surgical field. We do not need to go to the other side of the mandible to harvest the bone block. Everything is located on the same area. That's important in order to make our incision a little bit longer. We need to extend our incisions from one tooth missile to the defect to the ramus. We need to go as if we were going to extract a wisdom tooth, okay? That way we will have a full surgical field. We won't have any kind of flaps in the middle of our, uh, of our surgical field and we will have plenty of you in order to be safe and more predictable in our reconstruction. Let's take a look to this case. This case is a young female. She's 30 some years old and she has missing the second premolar and the first and the second molar. She need implants to be placed, but she doesn't have enough bone. It's too thin. So as Jose was saying, we are going to perform a crystal approach with a missile release incision and the distant incision is also going to be up to the ramus so we can harvest the bone block. So we harvest the bone block, we split it in two thin bone blades and in the horizontal augmentation what we are going to do is just place one of the thin bone blades in the plate that is missing. In this case, as you can see, is the buccal plate. So we are going to fix that thin bone blade to the mandible with osteosynthesis screws and remember we have to leave and a space to fill with particulated bone. We talk about this in another video, you have to do here. And now we just have to fill that gap that we have left with particulated bone. Everything really well condensed. We don't need another thin bone blade crystally 
that would only lead us to more chances to have an expose of the bone block of that bone block so we do not place it and we just have to close our flaps again you can take a look how are we closing the flaps when doing big reconstruction in this video here once everything is sutured we wait four months and after only four months you know with other techniques we are waiting more than nine months to to re-enter with curry technique with split bone block technique we only need four months and four months later we are going to place two implants remember always place the implants not too close we need at least three four millimeters at minimum it's a very big mistake to place the implants too close we need always to respect a distance safe distance in between those implants these implants are bone level so we are going to intrude we are going to submerge these implants one two millimeters inside the bone and we also we are going to take advantage of the situation and we are going to perform a connective tissue graft to have a better soft tissue we want a thicker soft tissue in order to avoid future resorptions so now we have the bone augmentation performed we have the implants in place and we have the connective tissue we fix this connective tissue placing at the same time the multi-unit abutments we just perform a hole into the connective tissue and that is going to keep the, the graft the connective tissue graft immobilized that is a good option to have a better soft tissue and save extra surgeries for the patient after the osteointegration period which is three months we will need to do a free gingival graft and probably the second stage surgery at the same time and send the patient to the prostodontic uh, colleague to start doing the prosthesis so thank you guys for being until here comment any question you have don't forget to subscribe and like the video so you help us to make the channel grow and remember that we always say the scalpel in your hand but the prostodontic world in your mind see you soon